I am delighted uh, that we have the greatest rhythm section that Manchester has ever produced. Uh, yeah, yeah. Paul and Steve Hanley. Oh, can you give a massive round of applause? Paul, Steve Hanley and John Miller. Just for cultural and historical purposes, William Morris of his parish spent two summers in Iceland in the 1870s, and his house is just over there, so there's a connection, a cultural connection to time. Appeal sessions. How did you regard them? You know, were they valuable session time? Were they opportunity to do something new? All of that, I think. Yeah, you. Uh, a lot, I think a lot of the time that you listen to the Peel session version and, and it's better than the album version. The, 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 the Peel version of New Girl is miles better than the album version. Miles better. Because I'm not on the album version, but I am on the Peel version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it started off using them as kind of like demos, but, but the way that it works, that you do it all in an afternoon and then you do four songs in the afternoon, really worked for the fall. Uh, eventually they became like, a thing to sell the album, uh, so you, you do the songs that were on that album that had just come out. I think it was a shame that because yeah. that kind of kept in okay. when we signed to Beggars, and we did end up doing Creep. We did it for Peel. We did it for Janice Long. We did it for Kid Jensen. That, bit, that, that, that was a bit, a bit sad that one. Though, but up until that, it was just you know like that. That's all schmuck and that. Okay, you know, we'll do anything we want. We don't care. Get tossed if anybody likes it. We'll just do what we want, which is a great thing. Not, not that the albums record with one eye on the cash register either. But <laughs> people session great. The best bit about the fall. Well, they were mostly drivers there, yeah. and the canteen was so cheap. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone else? Uh, this gentleman here with glasses on his head. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, uh, sat, as you're both here, can you say something about Slate? It's not in either of the books. Oh, that's not in either of the books. Yeah, I read them. It's not. Some new stuff. You're uh, Slate was brilliant. Slate was like um, every producer of the fall had ever had all in one room at the same time. It was, it was like fine for the job, I think. And in the end, for fine for the job, who produced X and none of them got it, which is pretty good. But no, X, that, uh, that was one of my most enjoyable. It is record, that was great that one, it just overshadowed by the middle mass Yeah, But it, it didn't bother me, that middle mass row, I never thought it was about Mark anyway, I and I can't see any lyric in that, I've always like a take lead, is he? Yeah, he is. <laughs> is he? <laughs> no, I loved that, that was great. Hey, working with Adrian Sherwood was pretty amazing, because he, he did this thing where he put the speaker at the top of the stairs with the bass drum in, and the mic at the bottom of the stairs, and then we re record it so you get this amazing bass drum sound. Not that you can tell. Not that you can tell by listening to it, but it's just stuff like that. We've never done anything like that before. That was great. And we had an acoustic guitar, we never had an acoustic guitar and my grand insisted we use acoustic guitar and um, fit and work again. But no, it was a it was a lovely album. Yeah. Lovely again. It's the wrong word. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> um, yeah. was, how scary was he as a boss? To you know, to work for. <laughs> not really, it's not really, it's not really scary because if you if you're in something for well the twenty years I was in it, if you're in there, it just becomes the norm, really. And he started off. You'd think, yeah, okay, he's shouting about this, and but he's got a point here, he's got a point. And then it got to the time where he was just shouting about whatever, and yeah, but, um, but, but you're in it then, you're in it, and uh, you were that frog in the hot water, <laughs> <laughs> the boiling water, waiting to explode. Uh, so, well, that's scary is the right word, isn't it? But, uh, I, I, I think I'm intimidating, I think. Intimidating, yeah. yeah. Well, it was Mark Smith, wasn't it? Yeah. None of us, any, after Martin and Una and Carl and Tommy Field, all of us went in 
to be in a band with Marky Smith. You know, he was Marky Smith yeah. by then. I, I thought about this, I thought about this a lot, and uh, I don't remember ever waking up in the morning and going, oh shit, I've got a gig today. <laughs> Think, oh no, I really don't want to do that. No, no. So, can't have been, yeah. you know, that bad. <laughs> it wasn't work, was it? Because you, you wake up every day and think, oh, shit, I've got to go to work. work. No, I never, never, never remember thinking that. You know, no, I don't want to get in that van with him today. Which probably would have been a good thing to think. <laughs> <laughs> a good thing to think at that time. But, uh, but, yeah, I don't remember, don't, you know. Hmm. So, uh, gentleman with the quip over there. <laughs> on, on Victoria, everyone dressed up. Were there any rules about what you wore on stage when you were performing in the general tour support? Not at all, no, no, no. Ridiculous, man. Oh, no. come on, the videos <laughs> in the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> Spent 30 grand on a video and dress up and, oh, I hated them. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in normal, when you weren't dressing up, yeah. What, what, no, there was no dress code. There was the only, the only time no, we ever came to a contretemps about what people were wearing was when, well, I don't care, were we in Australia when you and Mark bought them felt the cowboy hats? <laughs> no, that was in Brighton. In Brighton, the other single. Mark and Steve bought these massive felt cowboy hats, and Mark said, Mark Riley said, I'm going to wear mine on stage. And Mark, Riley, and Mark Smith was not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> he came out with it all, and then we did the danger hours, and Mark used to say, oh, it is Mark doing his impression of Tracy Pugh. And it. So that, was, that was the only time I could ever do it. Any... Never address code, no. No, no but, but I hated them videos. Oh. <laughs> As you could probably see, it's, uh, Craig said that there's a shot of me and Simon where we're more wooden than the set. <laughs> <laughs> Pope's alright, Pope's alright. The 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 Pope's Oh. The first one was, um, you mentioned like, you know, Mark wouldn't drink or whatever until like it, it was sort of clouded his judgement. Um, do you think that's like, I mean up, up until the end you're still writing original music, that was good. Like, how, like what do you feel about this like a period in, in terms of the albums coming out? After I, I, after I left, I had no idea. Dr. Book's letter I think is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's absolutely fantastic that song. And after I left, there's loads of stuff really that I think is great. Uh, Billy's Dead, I think, probably the best, probably one of the best Paul songs ever. I think that's wonderful, that song. So, yeah, there you go, there, the two for the summer. Uh, the second question is... Um... I think, you're sorry, I think you've got, to, you've got to give it him for, keep, for keeping it together and for doing it and for carrying on. Yeah. When, when I left, I thought, I, because we were, agents wouldn't book us and we were getting gig fees were like halved and I thought well this is no way this is going to carry on but you've got yeah you've got to give it for get new bands and, and they had that last band for 10 years which is quite amazing I think. Yeah. 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 I have a question about the uh, visiting the HP Lovecraft's grave on Long Island oh, you yes. in your book yeah I was wondering if you could because yeah. I recently went to, to Blackpool. Right. I, spent I didn't actually see the graves. I don't think they found the grave, did they? No. We went to the cemetery and you know, this American bus driver took us to H.P. Lovecraft's grave yeah. in the middle of the night. <laughs> and when else would you go to H.P. Lovecraft? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's you know, this bus coat, American bus driver, you think he's going to take you from the gig to your hotel. Really? And, no, 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 I'm going to go off and find H.P. Lovecraft. And Colin and Mark climbed over the wall of the cemetery. And we were just sat in the bus going, what the hell is going on here? Where are we? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure they ever found it. No, there was, a, there was this giant squid got in the way, so they never found it. <laughs> 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 good, yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, yes. Hi. 
Paul, I was talking to John Marr the other day, and he reckons you turned up on his doorstep. I did. <laughs> really? Right, all right. Uh, that was great. <laughs> Both of you are just you. Say again. Both of you are just you. No, no he wasn't. No, I was a. Is it drama? I was a schoolboy. I went to St. Bede's, which is a grammar school in Manchester, in sort of Cholton Wally range. And John Martin, he went to St. Bede's as well. And he lived like a mile away from the school. So, I mean, the big plan was, I was a massive buscock, so I absolutely adored them. They were my absolute passion. And the big thing was, if we go to his house, and pretend we want his autograph, he'll give us all the badges, because the buscocks have amazing badges and stickers. And we did it, we did it three times, we did the Pink Shelley's, we went up to Gorton and we went to his house. And if we asked for the autograph, then they'll give us some badges. Pink Shelley didn't have any. But <laughs> got John Martin to sign Spiral Scratch. Pink Steve Spiral Scratch, would you believe? And, uh, <laughs> but he was such a lovely guy, even then, you know, obviously, but he was my absolute hero because he went to the same school as me. He left school at 16 to join Buscox and I was St. Pete's and I left at 16 to join the fall and he, and he was he was my hero and I make no bones about it. He still is to be able to talk about I think the great, the good thing about, I always think about John Mann is he didn't want to get out as well, you know. He got out of Buscox just at the right time and he went back just at the right time and he got out again just at the right time. <laughs> So no, I, I'm not ashamed of that. I'm more than happy to admit that. Very earnest gentleman. Yeah, well, he's having a little bit of a vibe, sir. Can you say that you all share the same musical influences? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't, I'm, uh, Craig loved Frank Zappa and Can and Captain Beefheart. Oh. I like Can. I think Can are great. Never got me head on Captain Beefheart. Me neither. Me neither. It sounds like two bands rehearsed in two different rooms. Yeah, we did. All my musical influences are from Mark and Craig and Steve, basically. Any bands, but all. I mean, we all love David Bowie, but Mark Smith hated David Bowie, didn't he? Well, you know. He affected too. Yeah, he affected. Yeah, I think so, yeah. So what were you into before you in the form, apart from Bowie? All that. What were you from? Mark Hoople, Steve Riley, Roxy Music. Uh, it's a funny, I tell you, when we get, uh, we'll start, you got this thing about when punk happened and you know, oh, we've been so bored for years. It was a, it's absolute nonsense. There's <laughs> so much good music. Two years till the right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Two years previous, the yeah. greatest band. It's an absolute nonsense that, you know, all these people were suddenly not listening to music. They all had massive record collections. All the, but Johnny Rotten did not buy a Pink Floyd t-shirt to write I hate on it, did he? He had the Pink Floyd t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I, can't, I keep on missing somebody out over here. Didn't miss a chap here. He's a handsome fellow with his hand up there. All right, yes. <laughs> Back to what Paul just said about um, New Puritan being sort of a really good version from the Peel sessions. Was there sort of like a feeling? I've, done, I've, I've seen the fall all over the country. Every time they seem to come to London, Mark seemed to have a beanie's bonnet about something, and I was just to think. About London? Yeah, about London. <laughs> about, I, I, I mean, to a degree, it actually made the songs better. As you say, with New Puritan, it actually, I thought that when he used to come to London, the Peel sessions used to sound better because it sounded like he, had, he was annoyed about something. Yeah. Yeah, and th that so much did. New Puritan is far better than the, re the other recorded versions of it on the Peel session. I could, I tell you, I could write a book about Mark Satan. I don't know what I'd call it. What would I call it? I might call it, like, maybe leave the capital. I could call it that, couldn't I? <laughs> he did, he, that, but there's the, the least two songs on Hex, which is just his absolute abhorrence of that metropolitan London kind of... But it, but it was it, it's exactly that. Was it, he really hated London that much, or was it just, oh, I can't he didn't really, or did he? I don't know, but does, does it matter? If, if, if you fired him up enough to write a lyric, then that'll do, won't it? I think he had a bee in his bonnet about London. I don't know that he had necessarily had a bee in his bonnet about having to come to London to do it. But the, the, that's, you know, the Kensington White Rasters run for cabs, you know, the, that's, there's a line that runs through that, isn't it, to, to uh, Deer Park and uh, 
Do the one. <laughs> Fortress. <laughs> nice one, cheers. Before we pull these, I've seen you have to write about Hex of Induction Hour. Um, Steve, if you had to write the next book, what would you, which album would you write about? Ooh, that's it. Uh, I don't know what's, I don't know if there's one with as many stories, is there about? Uh, your task is pretty fucking great. Yeah, yeah pretty kind of straightforward, but <laughs> yeah. what? Grotesque. Yes. Well, it'd have to be a later album. It'd have to be levitate, I think. It'd have to be right about the making. It's actually so curious because of the whole. He could have right about the. Yeah, I suppose yeah. there'd be a fucking now, but I could tell you some stories about the making of levitate. <laughs> Go on then. <laughs> I won't be writing any more books about Paul Adams. I'm sorry to tell you there you go. Oh, come yeah. on! Oh, I'm not back to mine! Get up! Uh, so let's try and get through as many people as possible. It's, a, it's a question for Steve. I'm just curious because in your book, which I love, you, you take piss out of bricks quite a lot. How does she feel about that? I don't think I take the piss. It's done with affection. Yeah. Uh, I think, I don't think she, she's a read my whole book. So we could, so we could, I think she asked for all the parts that she was in to be sent to her, and she, she's read them and she doesn't seem to like it. She gave the book launch, so she's going to read it. We're in a band. <laughs> I think, I think, I think uh, Rich is a bit more... I think, I think, I think, I think, no, it was, the great thing about that book was uh, when we finished it, we sent it out to Colin the Rogan, we sent it out to Paul, and Bricks, and Mark Riley, and to see if they had any objections. And the tiniest little things came back. Bricks was like, I didn't demand champagne in Belfast. <laughs> That's the only thing I want to change. <laughs> She did, though. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right, let's check the red top there. Oh, hi. I was just on that. Someone mentioned grotesque before I took the fair album. How about the song with the NWRA come together? Because that one's fantastic. Ooh. The, the only thing I can remember about NWRA is Mark said, I want you to play the beat from uh, Fiery Jack, but slower. Because that's Mark, that, that thing. Cabaret beat used to go ding. <laughs> it was nobody in rock and roll, in, in bands, or certainly in English bands, or in any punk, post punk, was playing that beat. Carl, uh, Mike brought that to the table with Fire Jack, and uh, Mike, Mark absolutely loved it. I didn't want to play it. When they first played NWRA, I was playing like Steve Morris, you know, like, dum, dum, you know like, making it top. And what about the drum? That's all I remember. That's all I remember. It was that. So there you go. But yeah, um, it was. I can't remember much. I remember we played. We played it live a long time before we recorded it. I remember that. What do you remember? Oh, it's all about the drums. What is it about? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Travis saying we should he should get session music <laughs> <laughs> after one lesson. <laughs> We're gonna have to wrap it up in a second, otherwise it's gonna be a booksellers incident. I've got to go for a week soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have to walk home if you don't sell some books, which I recommend that you do. But look, I think we've got time for about a couple more. So you had your hand up, so we'll do yours first. Paul, what was it like being on the chase? Hey <laughs> Quick! I uh, first on, first off. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I got seven grand in the cash bill, that's quite close, you know? hey. You what? You watched it? You watched it. I watched it more times than I care to mention it. <laughs> like I say, it doesn't take long, does it? You can write a book about it. Alright, alright! Alright, go on, I one more, one more. Yes. Um, Craig's in this new book, is that right? Yeah. Interviewed. Right, so that must be the first time in about 20 years he's been interviewed. Like, was it 
hard to persuade him or an hour? It wasn't, I think, he only did it because it was me, without, you know, leashing to blow my own trumpet. He wouldn't have done it. Well, he, he did it, hadn't he? I mean, he's in uh, the Fallen, so kind of begrudgingly, only he did it by email. email. Yeah, by email. But, uh, no, he, he, he actually said he, he only did it because it was me, and then, yeah. because, you know, as a favour to me, so yeah, I'm quite honoured. Yeah, he comes across great in it, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, really so. yeah. Not, yeah, but it was, it was quite the honour, really, that he'd do it. Because, like I said, similar with, with Mark Riley, and you know, they, they don't talk about this stuff much. And Kay, as well, you know. So, it, yeah, it was. It was quite. I was quite touched that he agreed to do it. To be honest, he's not ready yet. But, well, he might have done, but I, he's not told me. We'll see about what he thinks. All right, so we're going to wrap it up now just because, like, and it's like if you've not read these two books, you should do. Seriously, get them both, read them back to back. And anyway, I say thanks to Steve uh, and Paul for coming down. It's been a really good